Aon Hewitt has come out with its 21st annual salary increase survey 2017 for India. And we have Anandarup Ghosh, partner talent and rewards at Aon Hewitt Consulting, joining us live this afternoon. Many thanks for joining us. Let's get straight to it. What are the highlights uh, of the salary increase survey 2017? The big themes. I think the big story this year is that we are seeing about a 100 basis point drop in pay increases compared to the previous years. And uh, this was to a large extent expected. Uh, we had uh, expected that because of all the economic uh, scenario all around, as well as a broader need to manage pay costs, you were going to expecting to see a bit of drop in pay increases. But I think the fact that it has dropped by about 100 basis points is quite a bit. A hundred basis point uh, drop in the pay increases. Now, sectorally, how does this sort of divvy up? I think sectorally you will find that uh, the sectors that have in the past been um, high up in the pay increases, uh, sectors such as the consumer internet business, uh, the pharmaceutical business and so on, those have uh, remained at the higher end of the spectrum. Um, I think the top five are uh, consumer internet, uh, professional services, pharmaceuticals, uh, consumer goods, etc. Uh, at the bottom of the spectrum are, 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 are industries such as cement, financial institutions, um, uh, some bit of uh, real estate infrastructure, etc. Uh, to a large extent, I think it's reflective of the fact that uh, industries where compensation costs are a large part of the overall cost structure. There you're seeing greater drop in pay increases, but in industries where uh, compensation costs are not that large uh, a part of your overall OPEX, so you're not seeing uh, pay increases drop as much. Can you reflect a little bit on uh, the psychology of companies right now? What are the factors that are making them, in a sense, you could use the word mature or cautious when it comes to salary hikes? I think we are calling it the graying of salary increases because uh, what is happening is over the last um, uh, 10 years, we have seen a gradual decline in the pay increases offered. And I, like I said, from a question about what people, what companies are thinking, I think it's a reaction to two things. Uh, one is a long run requirement to manage compensation costs. Uh, this is a, a significant amount of pressure by, by investors around the world and in India that compensation costs are increasing far too rapidly. Um, and then there is the whole overall uncertainty on account of the last quarter not having been good, uh, uncertainty about what demonetization will mean in the long run, um, how US politics, et cetera, will affect and so on. So it's a combination of things. I was going through the report and it was interesting to see a link to inflation, comfort from the fact that uh, you know, the consumer price index has been uh, lower in recent months. I can't recall uh, an inflation-linked salary discussion in the past. Uh, is this uh, sort of an explanation that companies are offering out? Yes. Um, the fact is, uh, it's a very significant drop, right? If you look at the formal CPI numbers at 3.2 odd percent, it is, a, it is a, naturally the question that investors would have is, is, is how do you justify a 8 to 10 percent pay increase when cost of living is only going up at 3 percent. Uh, the fact is that inflation in India has never been correlated with uh, pay increase because uh, what an individual feels on the ground with regard to how his uh, cost of living is increasing does not necessarily always have a correlation with how uh, the official figures might be. I'll just quote an RBI study here. RBI says that uh, their study of individuals says that about individuals expect uh, pay, uh, CPI to be at 8.3 percent, while the official figures are 3 percent. Okay, a couple of other things I wanted to ask you, and it may seem like I've got many moving parts here, but. Um, you know, what we're seeing as far as the salary increase survey for 2017 is concerned, and you asked that question in your report, is it just a one-year blip or is it a trend? Uh, is this something that people should uh, perhaps consider 
over, uh, over the next couple of years. Uh, so what's your final analysis there? I think our point of view on this is that salary increases as they used to be five, six years ago in the 10 and a half, 11 and a half percent range. That range will probably not happen in the near future, or at least in the foreseeable future. Uh, whether we will uh, go up a few percentage points, uh, it is anybody's guess. But for sure, we're not going back to, to the 10 and a half, 11 percent range again. And how does uh, the outlook for 2017 for India compare with, you know, uh, Asian peers? So India traditionally, for the last 15 years or so, has, uh, been, has been giving the highest pay increases across Asia. Um, India at 9.5%, China is about 6.5%, is the closest that comes to India. But I think the important thing about India is that uh, inflation adjusted, all other Asian countries uh, do about 2 to 2.5% 2 pay increase. Whereas uh, CPI adjusted, you're seeing about a 6% pay, pay increase in India. Again, your report talks about an increasing focus on talent and merit in the Indian context. How have you arrived at that conclusion? What is the evidence to back that assertion? I think that is actually the big uh, story this year. Because what you're seeing gradually over a period of time, and uh, you have to think about this from the perspective that at an average, the 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 average employee, the median salaries, the median pay increases are being managed more cautiously, more carefully. What is happening, however, is that companies are still allowing significantly higher premiums for people who are identified as top talent or as critical talent or who are expected to bring in some specific skills that companies need. So what you're seeing is that uh, from as low as about 1.2, 1.3 times ratio between the average pay increase and the top performer pay increase, that ratio is now about 1.8 to 1.9 times. So while the average performer might get lesser pay increases than in the past, the top performer, uh, his pay increase, her pay increase does not get impacted. Does not get impacted or is it actually uh, uh, go growing at a faster clip? You could say the, the ratio is widening. Um, if the average keeps coming down, then it will probably not grow as fast. But uh, yes, in, uh, but there are specific kinds of skills and competencies that are getting significantly higher premiums than in the past. Are there any divergences that you notice? You know, we've talked about uh, the big picture, but are there any exceptions in a sense uh, for hot sectors? Uh, you know, the outliers in a sense because they're the sectors of the moment. <laughs> it's an interesting point that you raise. This is the first year after a long time where there are no sectors of the moment. Um, till last year, uh, for instance, consumer internet or, or e-commerce was the flavor of the season. They were giving large pay increases. There was a lot of hiring activity in those sectors. This is, one, this is a strange year in which there are no sectors that are actually net attractor of talent. Almost all sectors are equally impacted. Uh, some may be a little more than others, but uh, there are no standout sectors this year. And, um, you know, away from just the salary piece, and I'm just going to mine your understanding of the space beyond salary, um, I know that this survey really focuses on the salary increase piece of it, but what are the underlying trends on attrition? Uh, you know, again, how does it sort of break up sectorally? Or given that this is a subdued job market, uh, again, uh, is it uh, lower attrition levels as well? I'm saying too much. I wanted you to dwell a little bit on the underlying attri attrition piece. I think attrition at 16.4 odd percent that we are uh, we're reporting for 2016, I think uh, is the um, is about 400 basis points lower than the 
average of the last five, seven years. Uh, uh, has there been a sectoral change? Maybe not. I think basically sectors that have a large feet on street population, high front, uh, large uh, sales force still have the high, high, highest attrition rates. Uh, sectors which uh, don't have that much uh, are more high tech, etc., uh, have lower attrition. But, uh, but I think the important difference this year is that the attrition in your critical talent pool, and every company has a critical talent pool, etc., defined. The critical talent pool actually is seeing significantly higher attrition this year than previous years. And that's because uh, certain sectors that have a demand for newer kind of skills or capabilities or newer kind of technology, there you're seeing significantly higher attrition in, the, in, in, in your critical talent. Mr. Ghosh, I'm just going to round off our conversation today uh, with uh, you know, a request to you to say, what's the big takeaway from the 2017 uh, salary increase survey? If you had to sort of put it out there in one line, how would you describe it? I would say this, uh, the graying of pay increases in India is a graying of pay increases for the average performers. The top performers are still going to see significantly higher growth for themselves. Uh, critical skills are, are still going to see significantly higher premiums for themselves. But the average pay increases in India have gone down significantly and are expected to remain in this level going forward as well. Anandarup Ghosh, Partner Talent and Rewards at Aon Hewitt Consulting. Many thanks for your time and for the clarity on uh, salaries and what 2017 is looking like. Good to talk to you today. Thanks very much.